Usually when you think of a mid-drive e-bike, you do not think of inexpensive. And not to say that $1,700 isn't, but considering the Reaspire Hurricane has a 500 watt mid-drive motor and it costs less than $2,000 with a 15 amp hour battery pack, it might not be such a bad deal. But the big question is, is this electric bike any good? The truth is, I don't know, but in today's video, we're gonna find out. Welcome back to Tail Happy TV. And apparently today, we're doing this twice. Now that's some mountain bike tires if I've ever seen them. Here's the seat, relatively narrow, a little bit of squish, mountain bike style, a little bit of suspension. Tires are mountain bike, 27.5 by 2.35, Chow Yang. Brakes are drilled and slotted, 160 millimeter, probably fine for a bike of this weight. The bike is listed as 58 pounds, which I don't really want to lift out of this box. Has a max rider capacity of 300 pounds. It's actually not that bad to carry. Here's a first peek of it after we get out of the box. Look at the mid-drive. Listed as a Ananda. We'll take a peek at the other side in a moment. But first things first. Come on. Reaspire. Explore the smart. Dot, dot, dot. Must be the charge port. No. Let's check out the battery. Ooh, 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 ooh. Battery is listed as 48 volt, 15 amp hour, 720 watt hours. There's all the details. What's the charger? User manual. Charger is two amp charger. It'll take about seven and a half hours to charge because 15 amp hours divided by two amps is 7.5 hours. Pedals, basic reflectors, basic tools, basic suspension on the fork with a toggle switch on or off. Branded Reaspire, quick release for the front wheel. Paint fades from dark gray to light gray. There are two other color options available in the link below. China Bike Engineering, proofed quality. Customer care is Reaspire at Outlook.com. Lightning. I thought this was called the Hurricane. The power from the mid drive will be sent through an 8 speed Shimano cassette with an Altus derailleur and whatever chain this is. We'll see how it holds up. Got a quick release lever for the seat. Handlebars, round rubber hand grips, Logan hydraulic disc brakes. These have been fine for me in the past. Basic controls, display. Whoever installed the hydraulic brakes put the line on the wrong side of the fork. Should be in there. In case you tip over, you don't smash your hydraulic line on something and break it. Oh well, I'm not gonna change it. Throw that front wheel on. It's got a quick release lever. And there's no headlight, taillight, or fenders weighing this bike down. On the right side, you get your eight speed shifter, your bell. Check this out in just a few. Looks like the display will allow us to change the max speed. Here's the pedals you'll be putting your power down through. Here's a look at the Logan hydraulic calipers. And here's what the Ananda mid-drive motor looks like on the other side. 500 watt mid-drive motor. Super curious to see how this is gonna perform. And you get the same exact brake setup on the back. Frame has some groovy grooves. Actually, so does this part on both sides. Tires call for 300 kPa. Not sure what that means. We'll set it to 250. That would translate to 36. On minimum seat height, here's what a six foot five dude looks like sitting on this bike. And maximum seat height. Pretty decent stand over height for my height. Actually seems fine for me. I have a 34 inseam, so maybe not quite big enough for a six foot five dude. I think they list it as six foot two max height. Let's pop the battery in. Where's that power button? Reaspire. Color screen. Display actually looks decent. Blue and it shows the battery up here. Color screen. Tab on through the options here. We get five levels of pedal assist. Orange button. Oh, shows you your watts, odometer, odometer and watts. Always love to see watts and the light switch toggles the display brightness. Probably hold down the settings button here to get into the settings. Yep, simple. Wonder what the speed limit is set on out of the box. 27.9, nice. So you can increase that beyond 27.9. Oh, not that far though. 31, unless you modify the wheel size, which would just trick the speedometer. Maybe you could possibly go faster in 31. I'll just leave it there. All right, let's see how this thing performs. I'm gonna crank it on to five, so the least effort from me. 
Oh yeah, seems all right. Sounds like a mid-drive motor. Let's try and change some of the gears. Oh yeah. Nice. So it actually seems fairly responsive. Let's run it through some gears. All right, dudes, I'm super excited to see how this mid-drive Ananda M100 motor performs. Been looking at the specs, we'll talk about it along the way. So we do have a torque sensor and cadence sensor on here. Starting the Strava to track our distance. So I have not even tried this bike yet, but first thing we're gonna do is pedal assist five with the torque sensor, 20% uh, grade, let's just give it a go. Whoa, whoa, this thing, this thing's got torque, man. So this mid-drive motor does send the power through the chain and the gears. And that was some impressive hill climbing ability as we should expect from a mid-drive motor. It's what they're known for. So the first thing I'm noticing about this bike is it feels pretty light and nimble. The mid-drives, they just, they make the bike feel a little more balanced and it makes the bike handle better because you don't have that weight of the wheel. Typically, you know, like the hub drive motors, they have the hub on the wheel. That's not good for uh, handling characteristics. Second observation I'm making is my glasses completely filter out this display, unfortunately. It's the polarized lenses on my glasses. However, when I remove my glasses, the screen is very bright and easy to read. So overall, you know, for the price of this bike, right now it's on sale for like 1700 bucks. For a mid-drive bike, that's like darn near unheard of, especially considering a 500 watt mid-drive. So is this thing any good? Today we will find out. Let's just go ahead and feel it out here. Pedal assist one, it kicks in like right away. Yeah, let's put on gear two. I'll press a little harder on pedal assist one. Yeah, you can feel it's a torque sensor. Um, I'm pedaling decently hard now, getting me up to like 12 miles an hour. So the torque sensor, it gives you input. It gives you power based on how hard you're pressing on the pedal, as opposed to like the cheaper cadence sensor styles. They don't do that. So I'm really curious, are we gonna get like a true premium experience out of this bike? Pedal assist three now. So yeah, I can feel it's giving me a lot more power already. Let me tap through, cause it does show you the wattage of the motor. Where's the button? Oh yeah, just the orange button. We gotta race this dude. Let's put it on a uh, pedal assist five, come to stop. There we go. Oh yeah. It's getting us up to like 22. Hydraulic brakes feel good, so I love that this bike does have hydraulic brakes and they didn't skimp there and just give us mechanicals. And this torque sensor right away is feeling nice. I don't think that it cuts power though as you shift gears. And in gear number eight, this thing is taking us up to 25 already, 26. Not even really trying that hard. So one of the beauties of a 500 watt motor, this dude, lost something. One of the benefits of a 500 watt mid-drive motor compared to a 500 watt hub drive motor, typically these mid-drives, they just feel more powerful. The cheapest bell you can possibly put on a bike. That's fine. So first impressions, this bike actually feels pretty decent. The handlebars feel wide like they should be on a mountain bike. And it's not full suspension, but it does have a little suspension built in that seat posts uh just to kind of insulate oh no no fenders either so it can, helps keep the bike light by not having you know all that extra stuff now it's not really like suspension just having that seat post on there but it does have front suspension so you know it's a mountain bike kind of like a hardtail mountain bike well it definitely is a hardtail mountain bike um yep no there's no uh cutoff sensor for shifting gears so if you don't reduce the power to your legs, you're gonna put all that power through the gears and it could tear them up over time. I wonder how fast it'll go out here. You know what? I'm gonna pull one on you guys here and take a different route than usual. The safe route. It'll put an extra few miles on our route, but let me show you something. Look how steep this wall is here. I wonder if I could climb that. <laughs> no, it actually gets a little bit less steep right here. Um, Pedal assist five, I'll put it on, but you see how steep this is? Let's see if I could like, do this like going slow oh you know what i'm gonna have battle strike uh. 
<laughs> All right, I can't do that. I'm gonna try it again here. Uh, go. Ugh. Nice. Pretty good little hill there. Okay, I think I'm ready for the whole thing now. I wonder if I can do it. Turn in here at the right. There we go. Oh, not quite. <laughs> oh shoot, I wasn't on the right gear. Let's do it again. I was on the gear four and it could almost do it. I mean, this this is really just kind of making a case for mid-drive motors. If you can afford it, usually, you know, they're a lot more expensive. This one, for some reason, is uh, way cheaper than we normally see for a 500 watt downshift to one. This will help significantly since we're sending all the power through the gears. Let's see if we can do it. Oh yeah, shoot, dude, I was like popping a wheelie, man. One more time for the camera here. Nice. <laughs> so I've got to say, first impressions, I'm impressed with this bike. For those of you who are regular watchers, you might know I just recently reviewed a mid-drive e-bike. It had the Bafang M600 mid-drive motor on it. And from all that I can see, this is basically like a clone of that motor. This one weighs like maybe like a half pound more roughly and claims to have 10 newton meters more of, of torque. I think this was listed as 130 newton meters of torque. Now, I'm not like a scientist when it comes to measuring torque, but uh, this motor definitely feels very torquey. Let's crank it up to pedal assist five and see what the wattage will show us if I pedal hard. Yeah, it's going over a thousand watts, like 1,200. We're going into headwind right now, but it, it's showing about a thousand watts roughly. And it claims to be 500 watts nominal. So obviously, you know, it can do more for peak bursts. Let's see how accurate that speedometer is. It showed 18 on the dash, 18 here. Put a little more effort in, bringing it back up to 1,000 watts. 22, 23 here. Yeah, so that's accurate. We got to catch this guy up here. He's got the craziest bike. I don't know if I'll be able to catch him though. Riding this direction, we have a bit of a tailwind. Let's see what the, the maximum speed is I can get out of this bike. It's bringing us to 28, 29, showing 700 watts. So it, it starts to cut you off how much power it's giving you once you get up here, I think. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what you can expect from any 48 volt bike. Front suspension is very basic, but you know, for as long as you're not gonna be doing actual, like, you know, mountain biking, jumping this thing and expecting, you know, like top tier downhill mountain bike performance from an, a bike, I think you'll be happy with the front suspension. Pretty much, you know, it just makes your ride a little bit nicer so you can kind of just go over stuff like this and it's not awful as compared to a bike that doesn't have suspension. <laughs> what do you guys think about the new route? Shop for the doggy and the shopping carts. You'll notice where we are here in just a minute. Oh, there's the bike we were just talking about right here. This thing, that thing is, uh, now here's where I wish I had a thumb throttle. I could just kind of give it a little power up over this curve. Look at that. This is this bike here costs more than this. The uh, Van Van Moof S3. That thing's like a three thousand dollar or maybe four thousand dollar bike. This is not anything near the performance of this. I can tell you that. <laughs> so zero to twenty acceleration spot coming from a new direction. And obviously, you know, we really there's no throttle, so I put it on like gear four and just kind of give it a little power. Go, ready? 15, 20, almost 20. So I mean, take it for what it's worth. Definitely propels you quickly. I wonder if we can get a little hop here. A little bit. Somebody's learning how to ride. This motor is very quiet, and from what I can remember on the M600 Bafang motor I just reviewed a bike with, this one actually sounds a little bit quieter to me. So as I mentioned before, 6'2", I believe, is the max height for this bike. I'm 6'5". Here's my pedal stroke. I can tell this bike's a little too small for me, but it'll fit most people. So let's get out here, ride on the pavement for a little bit. So just keep in mind, like, when you're shifting gears, just, uh, kind of let off the power just a little bit for a moment uh, off the pedals so you don't tear up your gears. Now I'm guessing there's absolutely no chance this bike's gonna be able to like ride through the sand up this hill. Despite the motor having enough torque to do so, the wheels are just gonna be, the tires are just not wide enough. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's trying man. That thing's kicking up sand everywhere. 
but uh, yeah, tires are just not wide enough. You need like a four inch wide tire to get through this. Let's try the light trails here. So suspension, it's a little pogo sticky, I guess you could say. It'll get through a little bit of that sand there, but can't stand it for too long. Mid drive, you know, it's powerful. So it's ideal for torquey situations like riding on trails. And to touch on the torque sensor a little bit more, um, it actually feels pretty darn good. Like, I mean, I'm on pedal assist three, barely putting any pedal in, and it's giving me like 100 watts of power. Let me crank it down one. So pedal assist one, about the same amount of effort. Now it's giving me about 60 watts, just barely touching on the pedals. So I have reviewed bikes with torque sensors in the past that felt like really twitchy, like way down, like when you're barely putting any force on the pedals. Like you had to like start putting like a good amount of force on the pedals for it to really register anything. This one seems like sensitive down to just applying like, you know, like a half pound of force to my legs. Crank that up to pedal assist five and it still feels like really smooth. It's just like helping me like proportionally down there. So now it's giving me like 200 watts, just barely pedaling at all on top gear of eight. So I have to admit, I was pretty skeptical of this motor when I was unboxing it and put it together. Also excited to try it. And I'm pleased to report it's pretty darn decent. Like I, I don't see anything wrong with this motor compared to like the M600 from Bafang. This feels like pretty much identical to me. I can't tell a difference. Now, what will it be like, you know, a thousand miles down the road? I honestly have absolutely no idea. Let's go ahead and turn off here and not do this normal hill. Oh, typically we do that. Let's do the grass today. Let's see if we can get up this. Oh yeah, no problem. <laughs> I think we can get up this. Let's try it. Oh yeah, <laughs> lost a little traction on the rear tire there. But I mean, it was putting out the torque, man. That's pretty, pretty legit performance, really. So a lot of times bikes will kind of struggle to get up this hill. Uh, obviously, you know, I gave it a little bit of pedaling. It's the same hill-ish. That was way more steeper. Way more steeper, is that a word? Bro, what are those? So I think that if there's any place I'd be able to get through the sand here, I'd have to sit on the seat and kind of go downhill a little bit. Which, speaking of seat, the seat's actually uh, not too bad. So yeah, you just gotta have some weight on the rear wheel, I think. And it's got the torque to, to get through here, actually. Slightly downhill. Oh, don't fall, don't fall. <laughs> Starting from a stop. We got this. All right, maybe we'll have to try and take it out by the water. So dudes, I think we're gonna skip the California incline today. There's really no point. This thing can obviously do much steeper hills. Get a quick little brake test from 20. Pretty easy to get up to 20. I'll stop by these people. They'll be scared. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh shoot. Yeah, dude, the uh, brakes work great on this thing. Front tire dug in there, came, brought the back off the ground. That's the danger of having brakes that are too good. You gotta be careful how hard you pull them sometimes. And the levers are hydraulic, so it does feel smooth. They're good brake levers. Feel nice to the hands. And I really, I wasn't expecting the 160 millimeter rotors on these Logan brakes to feel as good as they did or be as powerful as they were. Final thoughts on the Reaspire Hurricane. I mean, for 1700 bucks, a mid-drive motor, 500 watts, mountain bike style e-bike, I really don't think it's too bad. Now, yeah, you are gonna be taking a gamble on that Ananda motor, I suppose. Uh, but from my experience today, it seemed to perform pretty darn well. Will it be working a year from now? I have absolutely no idea. So if you do want to grab one, you can click the link below this video in the description box, buy through that link, and it would help support my reviews on this channel. But let's head on home, see what kind of final range we get out of this battery. And the torque sensor on this mid-drive electric motor is very intuitive, much better than the cadence sensors I review. And it's particularly great on the mid-drives. Dude, a Saunders Metacycle in the wild. First one I've seen. Let's do one last little hill climby test thing here. Oh yeah. Can I ride through the skates? Oh no. I ride over there all the time. This is horrible. All right, dudes, just finally seeing the first bar drop. 
it just kind of went down a little chunk there i mean it is a 15 amp hour 48 volt battery pack 18 miles is where we're at right now just about finished up so on a electric mountain bike with a mid-drive motor i think this battery is perfectly suitable i wouldn't want to add any extra weight on a mountain bike but mid-drive motors they just do better on range than hub drives because you can utilize your gears they're more efficient i don't even know what the claimed range on this bike is but you know i'd say you could do easily 40 probably probably more i mean considering the battery is like all the way charged oh no watch out squirrel that was terrifying and then yeah obviously the torque sensor helps the range too so if you guys want to grab one click the link below this video purchase through that link it would help support my reviews however if this is not the kind of bike you're looking for you can watch this video next thanks for watching guys catch you next time